Chung. Members, has already the appointed time will form the quorum. I call to order meeting of the Subcommittee on Energy Efficiency Labeling of Products Ordinance Amendment of Schedule 1, Order 2017. First thing on the agenda is the election of a chairman. So we'll proceed to the election of the chairman for the subcommittee in accordance uh, with uh, ROP 22 and also uh, Appendix 2, may I invite nominations from members. A valid nomination has to be made verbally by one member and seconded by at least uh, one member verbally and also accepted by the member concerned. Chairman, I nominate Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, that is you. I second. I accept. Any other nominations? No? Thank you very much. If there are no other nominations, I'd like to ask if members want to elect a deputy chairman. No? Okay. Please invite the administration to join us. Thank you. Good morning. Present for this meeting, we have Mrs. Dorothy Ma, PS for the Environment, and Mr. Harry Lai, Assisting Director from EMSD. Mr. Shan Chong Yi, Senior Engineer, Energy Efficiency from the same department, as well as Mr. Henry Chen, Senior Government Counsel from DFJ. Welcome. Shall I invite the administration to introduce the order to us? And then. I open the floor to members for questions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to explain to you the energy efficiency labeling of products ordinance amendment of Schedule 1 Order 2017. Uh, the ordinance commenced in 2008. The purpose is to uh, and uh, to enable consumers to make an informed choice with regard to the energy efficiency of uh, electrical appliances they are planning to buy so that they can uh, go for energy efficient products. All the prescribed products in the ordinance will be given a reference number by the director of EMS and uh, they can only be uh, sold in the market with an energy label attached. The importer or manufacturer has to carry out a test for the product concerned for submission to the director of EMS. Uh, we have already introduced uh, two phases. The first phase include uh, room air conditioners, refrigerating appliances, and compact fluorescent lamps. And for the second phase, we have uh, extended the scope to uh, washing machines with rated washing capacity not exceeding 7 kilogram and dehumidifiers. We review the ordinance from time to time with regard to the standards uh, uh, for um, classification. And um, last year, the government promised in this policy address that phase 3 will be introduced to enhance the coverage of the ordinance. So in this phase, we're going to include televisions, storage type electric water heaters, induction cokers, and room air conditioners of reverse cycle type with heating and cooling functions, and washing machines with rated washing capacity exceeding 7 kilogram but not exceeding 10 kilogram. Uh, 
uh, I think we can uh, save um, 115 million units of electricity and uh, by means of uh, the third phase we'll be able to uh, save about uh, 700 million uh, units of electricity for the whole of Hong Kong every year. Uh, the amendments uh, can mainly be found in Schedule 1 of uh, Part 1 of the Ordinance. Uh, this is a subsidy legislation that has to be passed uh, by positive vetting. And after this, we are going to uh, submit an other amendment uh, to amend uh, schedule a uh, part uh, two of schedule one and we are going to give an 18 months grace period to the um, importers and manufacturers on a par with uh, the practice for phases one and two in 2015 the EMST conducted a three month public consultation we covered trade associations, professional bodies, and representatives uh, from the Consumer Council. In January 2016, we consulted the Environment Affairs Panel of this Council with the support of members of the Council, I mean of uh, the panel. And uh, we've also uh, consulted, uh, we have uh, deliberated uh, this in details uh, with the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Subcommittee and uh, the Energy Advisory Committee. We look forward to support from members. Thank you. All right, I now open the floor to members for questions. Mr. Lowe. Thank you, Chairman. People are looking for products that have energy efficiency. And this will help to cut the power bill. And that's also a good environmental measure. Expanding it or extending it, uh, the scheme to other um, electrical appliances is worth doing. I have a question in terms of the operation of this scheme. <coughs> now, recently, we study another bill on labeling, and that's about e, um, the uh, WEE, the Waste Electronic and Electrical uh, Goods, and also there will be a levy. And uh, some members uh, compared the MEEL uh, with um, the um, WEE scheme. I just want to know when will the uh, energy efficiency label be attached? Uh, is it during the or after, immediately after completion? I just want to know the um, implementation in the uh, supply chain. Who is answer the question? Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Let me uh, explain briefly the operational aspects. First, the law requires the importer to conduct a test on the product and supply uh, and provide a report. The test can be done in other places, not necessarily in Hong Kong. Uh, during the process of production, a test might have been done. We look at the data and check what is the grading, because we do have grading from uh, grade 1 to 5. According, uh, they, they give us a test report, and then they apply for a grading, and then we give them a reference number. And then afterwards, according to the law, they will prepare the label, the energy efficiency label, and if the label is ready, then uh, the labels will be um, attached to the products um, before they're sold. Sometimes uh, the product may be too small. Say, for example, if it's a C CFL, then um, it may be too small to put the label on the uh, bulb. 
Instead, it can be put on the uh, package. Uh, and we also have the information put on the website according to the schedule. So according to the uh, product um, um, uh, reference number, they prepare the label, and then they put the label on the product. As for enforcement, we do conduct checks to make sure, uh, by our colleagues, of course, uh, to make sure that the um, uh, labeling is in order. We also um, do sampling checks in the market, and if we discover that the product is not up to the standard, then we can remove the product from our schedule, and then they will have to apply again, and they have to comply with the standard before they are allowed to put the label. And if we remove that label, then they cannot supply that product to the market. Next, Mr. Xiu. Thank you, Chairman. I have a question for the Bureau. Have they um, talked to the uh, stakeholders, say, for example, the electrical, electrical appliances, uh, sellers, um, trade associations? Well, I'll answer the question first, and then Mr. Lai will supplement. As I've said earlier, in 2015, we had a public consultation, and one way was the EMSD set up a working group, and there were many stakeholders, including the suppliers and also representative of the Consumer Council. And the working group discussed our proposal and our proposals. Uh, they gave their comments, and then our proposals were accepted. The EMSD, sure, the channels also announced the proposal. Say, for example, through the uh, website and the um, Energy Efficiency uh, Advisory Committee um, also was consulted, and the LegCo EA panel was consulted. Uh, Mr. Lai. Yes, let me add. Now we had a three month consultation in 2015. We set up a working group comprising all, represent all trade association representatives, the laboratories representatives, uh, universities, public bodies, consumer council are also represented. In drawing up the details, we have kept um, our discussion with them. According to the law, we also have to compile the code to practice. At the end of 2016 and early 2017, we had a three-month consultation on the code with the trade. And we did communicate with the trade, and they uh, support our proposal. Chairman, I have nothing more to ask for the time being. Uh, next, Tanya. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Now, considering uh, two uh, parts. First, now the uh, exporters and local producers will have to uh, apply. Uh, you do sampling checks on them, but uh, I don't know whether that is the correct impression. Now, recently you, talk, uh, you, you announced with the Consumer Council on energy labeling. So how, uh, how many uh, checks have you done, and are you happy with uh, the findings? Yes, Mr. Lai. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Chen, for your question. Concerning the um, sampling checks, now uh, they submit uh, their report first, and then we study their report. We examine the report to confirm that the test is done by a recognized lab uh, under the Hawk Loss system. Over overseas labs do have uh, reciprocal arrangement with um, the Hong Kong labs. After we set the grading, uh, then we will uh, conduct the uh, we give them the grading course, and then um, we will um, do sampling checks. We have done more than four hundred and fifty sampling checks in respect of the five categories of products. As for some of the products, 
we found that the findings uh, were a little bit different. Uh, uh, were different from the grading we had given them, but that belonged to the small num a small number. And some uh, um, were unable to comply in the first three years of the scheme, but in recent three years, in the recent three years, uh, for non-compliance products, there were only uh, four items uh, that differed uh, from the standard. Uh, as for the um, failures in the or non-compliance for the uh, first three years, probably the scheme was in its early stage, and therefore people were not familiar with that. Uh, we. Uh, the consumer council also did sampling checks, and we also did. Uh, we also do sampling checks, and uh, we we can um, make arrangements with them so that we will not duplicate our efforts. And say maybe they take some they take some uh, samples of some products, and then we take some samples of some other products, or maybe they do a test on the same product. Then we will not do the test. As for the um, difference uh, of grading uh, arising from the tests, I think products have been uh, improving. Now uh, we have uh, grade one to five. Uh, we hope that consumers prefer higher grade products. In the early stage, we have products grade one to five, um, but according to the past few years, you have found. And that um, in the market you are not able to get uh, products of grade three to five. You only have products of grade one and two. We will review that from time to time. In 2014, uh, we conducted a review on three products, and re we raised the standard. And after products have um, moved up to grades uh, one and two, then we will raise the we then raise the standard. Uh, so that some products will become grade three and four products, they become less efficient in our system, and then and they will also uh, be phased uh, out by the market. So from time to time, we upgrade our standard. Chairman, I'm looking at the uh, new, um, newly included um, products, and the um, regulation also. Uh, as a definition, I really maybe the the television set I'm watching is a TV set, but other people may be watching some other sets which are regarded as TV sets, but I don't think they are. Now, say uh, energy efficiency labeling is not something is not something new. Now there were five products which were included. Um, in this scheme, it has been effective, and uh, within the trade, um, the stakeholders have responded well. And it's also good to promoting business, and also promoting um, them keeping um, protecting the environment. Now um, we are extending it to cover TV sets, um, electrical water heaters, induction cookers, air conditioners of reverse cycle type, and washing machines. Now in the uh, first phase, uh, CFL is something that attracted um, some comments. Um, the CFLs were uh, too small, and people didn't know where to label, uh, put the label. But the problem was solved. But for these five types. Of products, uh, there will not be any dispute on uh, attaching any label to the product. I think um, it will be rather smooth sailing uh, in terms of discussing the order or scrutinizing the order by this subcommittee. Yes, yes, doctor. Yes, a simple question, chairman. The one. Product to be added is storage type electrical water heaters. Uh, there are also non storage type electrical water heaters. Can the arrangement be can, can explanation be given on how you deal with uh, the other type? 
Yes, Mr. Lo. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Lo, for your question. As for electric uh, water heaters, we implement the labeling in stages. We first deal with storage type electric water heaters. We've already got a standard for that, and it's easy to uh, set the standard. We do not rule out other type of elect electric water heaters, and even gas water heaters. Oh, gas water heaters, you will also consider. It's all about energy, right? And we need to save energy. We are studying that. Even um, cooking appliances. We now propose. We have now proposed induction cookers, and we are considering other cookers such as electric rice cookers, microwave oven, and even uh, gas hot plates or gas uh, stoves. Um, we need to have the uh, relevant testing standard, or uh, we need an international standard or internationally recognized standard. If there is no recognized standard, then we cannot set the grading. And we also need to talk to uh, the trade to see if uh, there are um, suitable labs uh, to do the testing. Although some of them are not uh, manufactured in Hong Kong, tests to have to be done here. So we have to ensure that there are sufficient laboratories to do that. And we also have to uh, consider the uh, uh, the uh, effect, uh, the impact. Uh, some products uh, may uh, uh, use a lot of uh, electricity, but uh, the usage is low. So um, that's a separate issue. So they may be considered in the next phase. Any follow up, Tanya? Thank you. I have uh, to attend a meeting on WKC next door. Just want to say uh, for induction cookers. I think the uh, definition for the electrical appliances is important because uh, consumers have to know uh, what are the prescribed products. I think uh, they have a definition in the um, appendix. I'm sorry I have to attend uh, WKCD meeting next door. Thank you very much, Ms. Chen. All right. Do we have to invite the public to comment on the order. I believe the industry as well as the public are familiar with uh, the uh, labeling system and I believe consumers will uh, consider the um, Electricity efficiency labels introduced in phases one and two when they are shopped for electrical appliances. So, do we need to convene a public hearing? No. Then, can we go to uh, cross by cross scrutiny? Uh, which one? From the administration uh, will lead us through this part. Let's uh, refer to the marked up copy, it is relatively simple. Paper CB one 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 oh seven sixteen seventeen bracket O one. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Allow me some time to find the right document. Take your time. Okay. Mm -hmm. One minute. Uh, Paper CB one 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 oh seven sixteen seventeen bracket oh one. Yes, please go on. Uh, let's refer to the marked up copy. Let's start from part three.
。系，我哋符合第二部分咧，讲紧咧就系话我哋所描述嘅。啊、uh, ，televisions and the other part is a storage type. Uh, electric water heaters and then eight induction cookers. So to add these three products to the schedule, right? That's relatively simple. Ms. Tanya Chen would like to Understand the、uh, definitions for these uh, products. Uh, what is meant by a TV?、Uh, what is a storage type electric water heaters? And what is an induction cooker? I think we、we'll、have to refer to another paper for this. Mrs. Ma, yes. Our details can be found in another order. Uh, so that means that、uh, we complete this first, yes,、uh, because the details can、uh, be found in another order, and、uh, there we have a、uh, positive vetting. Allow me to supplement. If we look at、uh, schedule、uh, one, a member of schedule one order, then in part two. We have definitions uh, for uh, the uh, products to be included, and it can be found in the amendment of Schedule One order. And as the as the administration said, after the amendment has、uh, approved a member of Schedule One order, then an other. Amendment of schedules order will be introduced to the council.、Uh, members may want to set up another subcommittee to study the amendment of schedules order. Thank you. That's very detailed. Mr. Low,、uh, I have some query. Why aren't the two、uh, parts dealt with together? Because、uh, a member of schedule one order is relatively simple. You're only adding three prescribed products, and、uh, what if we pass、uh, this one and、uh, we find out that the、uh, definitions are not in order? Yes, perhaps it should be done the other way round. Yes, I think、uh, the administration is usually a、uh, very.、Uh, Particulars when it comes to definitions, but I think for the sake of efficiency, the two orders、uh, should be scrutinized together. Either they should be introduced simultaneously, or we should reverse the order. Mrs. Ma, yes, you are very correct, Chairman. The two、um, orders are closely related, and therefore, in our logical brief. We said that although the second order、uh, is not yet introduced to the council, we have provided a draft so that members understand what products we are talking about. But because、uh, for order one it is、uh, to be made by means of positive vetting, whereas for the other order、uh, it is、uh, by means of a negative vetting. So the two are different. So we have to follow the procedures and、uh, deal with the first order first before we deal with the second order. But if、uh, members would like to uh, discuss uh, what、uh, the definitions of the products here in this meeting, we are happy to oblige. All right, then let's go on. Mrs. Ma, or Mr. Lai, thank you. All right. Definition of、uh, televisions. Then we will go to the products one by one.、Uh, hang on.
Let's take out the relevant paper first. Okay,好的，这样可以。那么下个单我，应该应该可以，应该可以。Okay,好，我们来睇睇。Alright，啊，appendix B，Mrs.Lai。Let's start from schedule one. Commencement date, uh, to be announced. By the Secretary for the Environment, by notice published in the Gazette. A second, uh, to add the prescribed products, uh, namely uh, TV storage type electric water heaters and induction cookers, and three, transitional. Uh, it's just like uh, the uh, previous two phases. We have uh, eight month, eighteen months. Transitional period. All right, that's the first part. And then, uh, uh, for uh, details, I think I can skip them. Let's go to the part of concern to members, and that is the definition uh, for uh, individual. Um, items and that should be found in Division Six uh, because uh, the previous uh, amendments are textual in nature. So, television means a product that is an appliance for the reception and display of television broadcasts. There should be a receiver. Will that include projectors? Uh, it says uh, that users mains electricity as the only power source, and uh, we've also got the dimensions. Uh, it has a rated visual visible diagonal screen size mm, exceeding 50 cm, but not exceeding 250 cm. According uh, to the industry, over 99 percent of uh, the TV uh, sets uh, will fall within this scope. And then there must be a built-in television tuner. That's the definition for television. Dr. Lowe, do you have a question? No, um, I'm fine. And second, Division 7, storage type electric water heaters. It has to be a household appliance. Designed for what heating water in a thermally well insulated container and for the storage of heated water, and two having a device to control the water temperature, and that the product has to use mains electricity as the only power source, and has a rated water storage capacity <coughs> not exceeding fifty liters for household use. Over. Nine percent of uh, the uh, water heaters can be covered. No, this is not uh, really a kettle. It is a water heater for um, showers or bathing. So it's different from uh, electric uh, kettle. Yes, they're not the same. All right. Uh, that's the definition for. Storage type electricity water heaters in Division 7. Division 8 induction cookers. The definition is is a product that is encased assembly using electromagnetic induction heating as the heat source for household cooking and that it has to 
use mains electricity as the only power source and has a rated power not less than 700 watts, but not exceeding 3,500 watts for each eating unit. And it has a total rate of power not exceeding 7,000 watts. We have done a market survey, and this definition will cover over 99% of the induction cookers available. Uh, Dr. Lo, any, any issue, any question? What about uh, the exclusion? It says uh, induction cooker does not include a concave stove. What what is uh, what is a concave stove? I'm not too familiar with it. I believe it is a cooking device. What is a concave stove, Mr. Lai? <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'm going to my colleague. Well, the testing standard doesn't include this because uh, it is a concave in shape. Uh, the um, test doesn't include this one. Usually, in the uh, induction cookers have a level surface, right? Yes, yeah, so usually induction cookers have a level surface, but if it is of a concave design, then the testing standards are not yet available. And I think that, don't think that <coughs> is an ordinary household use, right? Yes, uh, we don't have any testing standard for a uh, concave stove yet, so it is excluded. Right. Concerning the definition of these three products, I believe uh, we've heard the explanation, and members have no further questions. Yes, uh, Dr. Lowe. Yes. Uh, on this part, of the um, amendment order. It is not amendment of uh, Schedule 1 order. When will this part uh, come before the Council? You have already finished uh, drafting this. Yes, the uh, Secretary. Well, we have a two-step approach. The first part, uh, after the first order, First amendment order is approved, then we will have uh, the next order, I mean this order. So you have finished with your drafting work? Yes, we have done it already. Yes, the Secretary. Uh, could you also explain the transitional provisions? Transitional provisions. Yes, thank you, Chairman. If I may go back to the uh, First Amendment order, um, there is a grace period of uh, 18 months in Section 5. This is to enable the uh, suppliers and importers to make preparation uh, for the uh, change. That's in part three, transitional provisions. Can you be more uh, detailed uh, in your explanation in terms of the transitional arrangements in part three? Pages three and four. Have you found it? Fukin A. Uh, NXA. Part 3. Transitional provisions. NXA. Part 3. Chairman. Well, I will start first. Section 5 uh, is to amend 
sections 4, 5, and 16, 1A and B of the ordinance during transitional period. This is to uh, prohibit the uh, manufacturers and importers um, from um, selling their products if there is no label. The transitional arrangement is um, for the uh, grace period. Without, uh, within the grace period, even if there is no reference number or no label, the products can still be sold. Um, the importers, um, Section 5 deals with uh, the situation in which the importers and um, manufacturers who do not have um, the label. As, as for 161A, the director um, may serve an injunction. This is or prohibition order. This is also for the transitional arrangement. And uh, the exemptions um, will not be subject to this restriction. And this is in respect of uh, the 18 period, 18 month uh, grace period. I have a question concerning the 18 months. During the uh, transitional period, if a product doesn't have the energy label, uh, the product can still be sold. It is not in breach of the law. But is it at the importer level or wholesaler level or retailer level? So I just want to know at what level is the um, rule applied. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Concerning uh, supply, the definition is supply. Whether it is at the wholesale or retail level, the arrangement is the same. There is no distinction. Chairman, yes, Dr. Lowe. Uh, you apply the same at the retail level. Then um, it's not a new question, but it's an existing question. It's about uh, the existing stock. Say a TV set may be uh, from the stock, and it may have lasted for more than 18 months. So how can you um, implement this? Yes, this is also my concern, my concern. whether they are TV sets or other products in uh, phase three of the scheme, um, the products do have a second-hand market or a secondary market. If um, the scheme covers import, export, and retail levels, then what about the retail in the second-hand market? Say before the, there are products before the uh, law was passed. Now, after 18 months in the second hand market, uh, can a, uh, the, the product doesn't uh, have a, uh, an energy label? Yes, I think it is something like you hold a stock, you sign a contract. In a main mention, you want order, uh, section 7 as a provision. If the um, product has already been acquired or imported, if a contract has been signed, then uh, before, as long as uh, they can prove to the satisfaction of the director, and that before the commencement date, a contract has been entered into, then um, that uh, product will be exempted. That's in Amendment Order Section 7. So the director has discretion. 
to exempt the product, right? Yes, the director can exercise his discretion by law. Say if an importer has signed a contract, the contract has a be, uh, uh, is uh, given to the director. I think your answer is different uh, from my question. You're not addressing my question. I'm talking about the second-hand market. Say in some uh, places such as Abliu Street, Yu Chao Street, and you can see, and I can see, uh, uh, vendors selling second-hand TV sets. These uh, TV sets um, were um, owned by some other people 18 months ago. And after the labeling um, a, a scheme comes into force, and it will be in breach of the law. Now, if you uh, look at uh, Section 3, the law does not apply to prescribe products from A to F, and one provision is second-hand products. So second-hand products are not covered. Now, Chairman, my question is that it is not a second-hand product, but it is, say, the uh, supply chain cycle is rather long, and some um, electrical appliances uh, can become um, very uh, can 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 become um, uh, very uh, old in the stock, and it may be sitting in the stock for uh, more than 18 months. It's not a new question. I think the same uh, question also applies to existing products which are already in the scheme. Yes, thank you for the question. How did you deal with that in the past? Well, we apply the same rules. Now, any now, if the product was imported before the commencement date of the law, or if a contract has been entered into for the procurement of this product before the commencement date of the law, then uh, the scheme will not cover that product or that item. You can refer to. You may refer to section seven. And so, even if. It is at the retail level if the retailer is able to prove that the product uh, or the item is imported before the commencement date of the law, then the item can be sold even bef uh, without a uh, an energy label. Any further questions? Ah, uh, yes, Miss uh, Professor Yeo. My question might have already been un uh, asked because I was next door uh, a while ago. Say, some, suppose somebody um, puts on a faked label. Is there any penalty? And is there any way to distinguish a true label from a faked label? Please well, answer the question. Penalty. Yes, Mr. Lai. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Li Yu, for the question. Now, you, ha you may have to refer to Section 13 of the law. Uh, it's an offense to use an unauthorized label, and it's subject to uh, a fine and, and also imprisonment for six months. So it is a fine together with a, an imprisonment sentence. What is the level of fine? Level 6. Yes, I know there is penalty, but who will take the uh, initiative to investigate and say, uh, I trust that the label is true? Does the EMSD conduct any sampling checks or inspections? Oh, yes, we are the law enforcing department. The EMSD, the EMSD uh, has a several prong approach. We have colleagues conducting sampling checks on the products, taking samples and testing, and we also check whether the label 
is in line with our requirement and whether uh, there is a uh, correct reference number and whether there is any unauthorized or faked label. We have been doing this and we conduct about 600 checks per year since the uh, commencement of the law. We have conducted more than 5,000 checks and it is uh, only uh, I, I've uh, consulted my colleague and uh, we have not found any uh, faked uh, labeling. The problem, uh, a small problem, is that uh, some, has for, uh, some have forgotten to put on the label and some uh, have started selling the product before obtaining a label. But these are few and far between. And if we found that there is something uh, not in order, then we stop. Uh, a pro we, will, we will stop the sale. We issue a prohibition order, and we've um, um, done that before. And we may also hand out prosecution, or we may start a prosecution if necessary. And we also uh, conduct uh, we uh, sampling checks. We also work together with the consumer council. The Consumer Council also conducts a regular uh, sampling uh, sample testing, so we work together um, to conduct checks. Uh, a final word. Yes, um, if they um, fail the standard, then we can remove the product from the list. Now we, it's very common to buy on the internet. Now you very active in uh, checking on the uh, retailers, but what about uh, those? Internet um, purchase. Yes, that's a uh, uh, very uh, good question. You've noticed uh, that e-purchase is a trend, and we are paying attention to that. We are f trying to find ways to deal with e-purchase. Uh, yeah, recently, it is um, about another piece of legisl uh, legislation. And that's about the safety of electrical heating uh, products. And we follow the matter up. Uh, we've come across cases, and we've started prosecution under another law. As for e-purchase, we will uh, step up uh, checking. And if there is anything untoward, uh, we will uh, contact the seller and pursue the investigation. Uh, it may involve cross-border cooperation with other law enforcement authorities, say, for example, with the mainland. Um, we have uh, a re uh, um, an agreement with the uh, mainland authorities on quality inspection and, assur and, and insurance, uh, quality inspection and quarantine. And I have a simple question, Mr. Lai. Now we have uh, got ten products covered by the three phases. Uh, I'd like to know whether there are products not covered uh, by uh, these uh, by this ordinance. Is that right? What about e-products? Can they be covered? I will uh, respond first, and then our DOJ colleague may supplement. Now we have not confined it to whether uh, the product is available uh, over the counter or uh, through uh, e-shopping. DOJ, I agree to this view. As said by the um, bureau. Uh, uh, sections uh, four and five is about uh, supply. Supply can include uh, leasing. Uh, it need not be a physical shop or a face-to-face -face, uh, transaction. So if it is uh, available by means of e-shopping, then the products can uh, be covered. If it takes place in Hong Kong, if we talk about other jurisdictions, uh, then it's a bit complicated because uh, our law is only binding in Hong Kong. So it depends on whether the supply takes place in Hong Kong. 
whether it is by means of a physical shop or by means of e-shopping, they will all be covered by this uh, ordinance. The question is, how are you going to enforce when it is by means of e-shopping? Now, I I don't purchase the product by means of e-shopping in Hong Kong, and that I take it into Hong Kong after I have bought it. Then uh, I will not be caught by this uh, piece of legislation because I uh, have no intention to supply the product to others. And what if e-shopping is done in Hong Kong and uh, the supply is not in Hong Kong? It may be in the mainland or in Japan. So uh, whether the product is delivered by means of uh, express mail or courier, whatever, it uh, is delivered to me. How can the administration uh, be made aware of such uh, transactions and how can you catch the supplier? Because you will not be able to enforce um, the legislation as it is written. But then online shopping is uh, something is a new trend that uh, only started uh, the past ten years or so. So even product safety and uh, safety of uh, toys and food safety are affected. And I want the um, administration uh, to think about these issues to catch up with new developments. Of course, uh, this issue is not directly related to the uh, current uh, orders, but I hope this can be put on record. I hope the administration, not just your bureau, uh, but other bureaus and departments as well will uh, think about this. Is that uh, what you mean, Dr. Yu? Yes, thank you. If we have no further questions, we have uh, to discuss the legislative timetable. So do you want to do it quickly or slowly? We have completed a scrutiny of the bill. And the earliest date is for me to report to the House Committee on the 23rd of June. And uh, the uh, order can uh, be considered by the Council on the 12th of July. The deadline for giving amendment is the 5th of, January, of July. So this is the earliest uh, legislative timetable we can do. Of course, we want to uh, it to be introduced ASAP after it's about um, energy saving. Okay, no objection. Report to the House Committee on the 23rd of June. Uh, we were up to part five only, but uh, what about uh, parts uh, five and six? There are consequential amendments. The uh, MMELS new products. New prescribed products to be included into the MEELS. All right, legal advisor. Any question? If not, I believe uh, this is similar to the transitional provisions for uh, the previous two phases. All right, we will report to the House Committee on the 23rd of June.
and the deadline for giving notice of amendment is the 5th of July and uh, consideration by the Council on the 12th. If there are no other issues, then our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.